right now, the race is on between the new COVID-19 variants and vaccinations. If we can get enough people vaccinated fast enough, there's a chance we could end this pandemic before the summer is out. And yet, there's been serious disinformation about how bad this virus is ever since the pandemic hit our shores. By and large, this disinformation has come from Republican politicians, most notably from former President Trump, calling the disease nothing more than a bad flu and shunning globally accepted safety practices like mask wearing. You might ask, what does this have to do with vaccinations? And the answer is that if a sizable portion of the population doesn't think that the pandemic is a big deal, those same people may be less inclined to get vaccinated, leading to a protracted pandemic resulting from a lack of vaccination-driven herd immunity. And yet, to even my surprise, at least for now, that political polarization and vaccine uptake just doesn't seem to at all be the case. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, I'm going to dig into the data on vaccination rates across the country and see if politics plays a role in vaccine distribution speeds. If you stick around to the end of this video, you'll not only see how I systematically approach this question, but you'll learn the roots of the answer, and I bet you'll be as surprised as I was. There are really two key questions to ask ourselves. First, we should ask if everyone around the country has relatively equal access to vaccines, regardless of whether they live in a red or a blue state. After all, one way the political bias could creep in is if some states are favored in receiving vaccine doses over other states. One way we can do that is by seeing if states that lean more for one political party over another received more doses of the vaccine. Well, this chart here is what's called a scatter plot. Each state is shown, and on the horizontal axis, you see the fraction of votes that went for President Biden in the recent election. The more to the right, the bluer the state, and the more to the left, the redder the state. On the vertical axis, you see how many doses a state received relative to that state's population size. For example, about 40% of voters in Louisiana, a relatively red state, voted for Biden, and that state, as of January 26, when I made this video, has received enough doses to vaccinate about 13% of its population. About 63% of voters in California, a relatively blue state, voted for Biden, and that state has received enough doses to also vaccinate about 13% of its population. There are two noteworthy outliers here. First, Alaska, a moderately red state, has received enough doses to vaccinate just over 22% of its population. And second, you have Washington, D.C., which received enough doses to vaccinate just under 14% of its population. But the distinction here is that it is a very blue, not quite state. Other than those two outliers, the rest are all bunched up pretty close together. In fact, if we conduct what's called a correlation analysis, we find absolutely no relationship between the number of votes that Biden received, a reasonable measure for how red or blue a state is, and how many doses that state got. Another way to look at this isn't to see how people voted in this presidential election, but instead to look at who is running that state. As in, you could imagine that Republican governors who ingratiated themselves to former President Trump may have secured more vaccines for their states. Again, that's just not the case. States run by Republican governors received enough doses to vaccinate about 12.7% of their population. And states run by Democratic governors, well, they received enough doses to vaccinate about 12.9% of their population. In other words, in terms of vaccine distribution to states, there appears to be absolutely no meaningful differences as a function of how blue or red that state happens to be. Okay, so distribution of vaccines to states doesn't seem to be that political at all. But what about distribution to citizens? This is where, in total honesty, I thought there would be a huge difference. Republicans have downplayed the pandemic enough that I could imagine that they wouldn't even bother to take the vaccine in the first place. But I'm not too proud at all to admit that I was just dead wrong. But before we look into that, if you could just take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share it where you can, I'd really appreciate it. And with that said, let's take a look at vaccine uptake by state. So this graph now shows the same thing on the horizontal axis, how red or blue a state happens to be. But now on the vertical axis, I'm showing the fraction of people in a state that have already received at least one dose of the vaccine. Again, even eyeballing this, you can clearly see that there's really nothing going on. If anything, the two most vaccinated states, Alaska and West Virginia, are firmly red states going against my preconceived predictions. In total, there just isn't a relationship between vaccine uptake and political orientation of a state. Again, if we run a correlation analysis, we find no relationship here whatsoever. And if we look to see which party the governor of each state belongs to, we again see nothing going on. States run by Republican governors have vaccinated about 6.1% of their population, 
and states run by Democratic governors have vaccinated about 5.9% of their population. In other words, vaccination rates are basically the same regardless of who runs your state. And for those of you a bit more statistically savvy, these results hold when you statistically control for things like population size of a state and the interactions between state size, vote shares in the presidential election, and who the governor is. In other words, you can throw a lot at this to try and find some kind of politically oriented differences in vaccine uptake, and it's just not there. To be clear, this is a very, very good thing. COVID-19 doesn't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It will infect you and potentially cause great harm just the same. So the fact that all Americans, regardless of political preferences, are getting vaccinated roughly at the same rates is a very, very good thing for all of us. And yet, it's possible that this will change in the coming months. For now, the vaccine has largely been distributed according to the CDC guidelines, which give preference to those working in the medical profession, to assisted living facilities, and to those over 75 years of age. Some states have started broader rollouts, but those have been very recent. I do wonder what will happen when the vaccine becomes available to everyone. Will the disproportionately Republican lack of concern over COVID-19 result in different vaccination rates, depending on which state we talk about? Or will everyone rally together and end this horrific pandemic once and for all? As much as data can tell us a lot, I don't think we'll have the answers to those questions until people make those decisions for themselves. For what it's worth, I'll be standing in line as soon as my turn comes up for vaccination. Until then, be safe, and as always, thanks so much for watching.